Full moons are when the moon reaches peak energy. It reaches the apex of its power and then it releases. So during a full moon ritual, by doing it under a full moon, it's like we're harnessing those lunar vibes to give the whole thing a little extra juice, harnessing those releasing energies. And the most profound thing that I do with a full moon, which is like the book and everything, the burn your stuff, is writing on pieces of paper. I now choose to release whatever it is, shame to about that thing, anger towards that person person and you read it aloud under that full moon by yourself with others now choose to release that 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 you light it on fire and as it starts to burn you say and so it is do you want to get into cards now pulling some cards now yeah oh, we'll do you, if, yeah? if okay. you want to yeah hi guys welcome to elevated conversations in our conversation today we speak to laurie often known as tarot laurie and it's a fantastic conversation we talk about how she moved from a normal corporate job and started down the path of tarot and also her love of full moon rituals which i was really interested to learn about i think this is a fascinating conversation we hope you love it tarot laurie everyone Welcome, Laurie. Beautiful Laurie's from Canada. We've just worked out. And it's so good to have you on our show, Elevated Conversations. So welcome, Laurie. Thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled to be with you today. So we'd love to hear all about your awakening story. How did you get to reading tarot cards and doing readings for people? How did you get into this beautiful, uh, I guess, energy flow of the awakening? Well, I think my awakening was a very like tortoise versus hare situation because I've always been I'm 54 now and I my tarot deck that I have is 35 years old it's every reading I've ever done is in this deck and I grew up in Calgary and there was a witch in Calgary a good witch and she was the psychic everyone went to and I you know my dentist went to her. everyone knew about this woman and and it was back in the 80s, like you needed to know someone, there was no Google. And when she she did everything, she did the, the you know, tea leaves and palm and crystals and all the stuff. But when she pulled out the cards, I was like, tell me everything. <laughs> it, it, just, it was like a love at first sight thing. And so I always had these cards and she ended up being my mentor on tarot. And I still went the safe route and got... Um, Oh, safe route in Australia, I think would be a different. <laughs> oh, the lingo. Yeah. Well, well, days. Yeah. I got to watch what I was saying. Uh, the safe, the safe path would have been, uh, is, is the one I took initially of doing um, at a communications degree and getting a corporate job. But I always had my tarot going on the side. And that's why I was sort of known as tarot Lori. Cause it would be like Lori, you know, tarot Lori, like the one who does tarot. And so for years, you know, I, I got married, I had my kids. I would do my tarot and then I started slowly like, oh, well, strangers are asking me. So now I'm doing it for a fee. And what happened about, I don't know, in the last 10 years or so, I sort of went all in. I I had left the corporate world. I was doing freelance writing and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to plant my freak flag, let it fly and went all in with tarot. And once I created that vacuum, it was filled almost immediately. And then COVID happened. And suddenly I was doing readings with people in Australia and Kenya and Kuwait and Panama and all over the world. And what's happened, I'd say, and I'm just getting sweaty, even talking about it, you guys, um, <laughs> in the last like three years or so, three or four years, things have accelerated even more. It's almost like when you're, when you see a video and it's sort of buffering and then it goes speedy, speedy to catch up. Like that's what it feels like is happening now because I've gone even more all in. And so there has been this slow, steady awakening for 30 plus years, but the last four or five years has been like a rocket ship. I love that. And it's been, it's, and it's just in flow, you know, just trusting, just having that trust and it's so easy to say and so difficult to do, mm. you know, that mm -hmm. things will just be the way they're meant to be. But I'm kind of living proof. I'm a professional terror reader who does that. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. I love that. Well, thanks for opening up that energy to being of service. It's definitely seems like your higher self called that in and was like, okay, just a little bit, just a little bit. You can still juggle and have your foot in 3D and, the, you know, your corporate yeah. life while you're doing the mum thing and now you're all in. So it's so, it's so wonderful to hear. Yeah. Once now that the kids are older and everything, I've just, um, yeah, everything has really just gone off in the stratosphere and it's, and it's also just the power of manifesting the the way that I've seen manifesting work in my life and my clients lives is it still blows my mind. You know, I'm sure you see this with your work, too. You're so immersed in it. But every so often something happens. You're like, how is this? What? Oh, my gosh. Like it still blows my mind. Yeah, it totally blows our mind. There was a student yesterday that actually um, found like a physical item after our class in the park randomly. That was a synchronicity that was exactly the same color as this unique thing that um, we were teaching. Um, and she just couldn't believe it because it was manifested in physical form, you know, like often you'll see a sign or, you know, but this mm -hmm. was a little like trinket that she could actually pick up and take home because there was no one's in the park. And uh, we're just kind of looking at each other going, this, this journey is so unreal this is magic you know yes I know it's kind of like the universe was like we're gonna make this as like irrefutable as possible as undeniable as possible by giving you a physical tangible object so you can't talk yourself out of it right yeah totally exactly. totally yeah. so working in what you do compared to early being in corporate and communications is there a whole different level of fulfillment for you do you do you feel like you're more aligned with you know what you came in to do so to speak because a lot of people often talk about that when they make the shift very much so I feel like what I did before was my you know my vocation um and even writing I wrote a book and I've and I've done freelance writing for years as well I'm a really strong writer that is definitely a career and the tarot and the just the work I do with people, even if it's without the cards, just whether it's presenting or speaking workshops, tarot is my calling. It's my mission. And my mission is always inspire, empower, and enlighten. And I'm very much, I'm really clear on it and I'm really confident in it after all of this time. Oh, I got Goosey's just saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm good. good. I love that. I'm <laughs> so with your book, burn your Beep. Beep. Burn that shit. Burn your stuff. Yeah. Burn that stuff up. Tell us about that book. What inspired that book to come? Well, the, here's a story in manifesting is that I had a little tarot workshop I had filmed and was selling on my website. And I thought I'm going to do a little pamphlet to go with a little PDF document to go with it. And then it became this bigger project. And I had like a little, a little story, an anecdote to go with each card showing it in practical application. I thought, oh my gosh, this is kind of a book. Is this a book? And, and then I started thinking, well, maybe I could like do it where I'm not just self-publishing where I actually get paid like $500 or something like, well, how about that? Or if I just even don't have to pay out of pocket. And I just sort of kept expanding my vision of it. And I started researching agents and sending out my query letters for this tarot book. And I, the tarot book got me the agent. It got me meetings with publishers. And when we had a meeting with Harper Collins, um, I've been leading workshops in manifesting and release rituals. And the release ritual is called burn your stuff. Mm -hmm. My friend's kid says, burn your shiitake mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he gets away with it. He's like eight. But um, I, I do this burn your stuff ritual on Instagram live every month, 8 PM Eastern, regardless of the weather I'm in Canada. Sometimes it is really cold and I'm out there. Blah, blah, blah. And there had been a full moon a few days prior to my meeting with Harper Collins. And so we got on this call and they said, and I was actually a bit early and I was with three editors, like the executive editor, senior editor, and then an editor. And my agent hadn't yet joined and they're like, oh yeah. So before we get in, you know, while we're waiting, tell us about this burn your stuff thing. We saw it on Instagram the other day. And I said, oh my gosh. And I, blah, 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 I started talking about it. And then once we were in the call properly, they sort of said, you know, tarot's great. And you know, we know you have a unique approach, whatever, but there's a lot of tarot, but tell us more about these rituals. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, my, my next book is actually going to be about rituals. It, I had no like serious plans for a next book yet it had just been so but I was like absolutely like I'm oh, ready to yeah. go 
<laughs> and so I ended up getting a two book deal because my agent is amazing and said, if you want the ritual book, we're doing the tarot book too. And the the ritual book actually came out first, the tarot books next year. And it's changed quite a bit to be a companion to burn your stuff. So the book is called burn your stuff because that was the thing that kind of launched it and the manifesting of it all. Like I always say with manifesting this or something better, because we don't know what we don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And and it became some like beyond anything I could have imagined. Because at first I was like, maybe a publisher. And I thought, ooh, maybe could it be a big five publisher, like a Random House or a Harper Collins? And it turns out, yeah, it actually could be, Lori. Yes, for it can be, darling. Wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's so good. That's wonderful. really exciting. Like, I, I love hearing, you know, how these stories work out because, Often when, let's just call it, you're divinely helped, when things, you know, you're like, um, there's that uh, beautiful saying, you, you live your highest excitement, but you don't get too fixed on the outcome because often the outcome might be beyond what you could have thought. And you're thinking, maybe it could be, I could get the book into a big five, but it's like two books, da 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 like it's even better. You know, like your, your grey matter mind could only stretch so far and then it's like your higher mind or your higher self kicked in and went, well, actually, there's a whole lot more in store. If you just get you out of the way, exactly. right, now it's going right? to flow yes. through, <laughs> right? And it's so interesting because when I teach these manifesting workshops and I talk about it in the or write about it in the book, Often when you're doing the manifesting, things come up that you realize you need to release and burn under a full moon, you know, because it's you get these limiting beliefs presenting themselves about like, God, could it, could I possibly do? It? Well, how would I get, how would I get with a big five publisher? I don't even have an agent. How's that going to happen? You know, and you can, and then that starts to, ooh, goosies again. It starts to illuminate what maybe needs to be released, you know? So it becomes this beautiful, I always say in my readings, you have to pull the weeds so you can plant the seeds, mm. you know, and we pull the weeds under the full moon with burning our stuff. And then we plant the seeds with the manifesting of it all. And I always talk about manifesting, you know, it's the intention and then the inspired action. And then you step back and let life respond. You let the universe unfold and you don't worry about the when or the how you focus on the what and the why, mm. you know, if you can get clear on those things. And, and exactly what you were saying, like putting your focus on that, like high vibration state doesn't mean you're just, like, I always tell people like, I, even though I have a vision board, I'm looking at it right now over it. I call it a soul board, but um, the ding dongs in front of their vision board that are just like, when's it happening? When am I moving to Paris? You know, and they're just hoping for like fairy godmother, bippity boppity boo stuff. And that's not how it works. You have to, you have to, you know, release the stuff getting in your way. You have to take the inspired action and, and be really clear on your intention. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like I've been going through that kind of process for myself as well, just like with really sitting in, okay, how can I be of service and not being attached to any outcomes? Because a lot mm. of um, us light workers, us warriors, our old souls coming here and, you know, like yourself sitting in these seats to plant the seeds um, and be that way shower, you know, we're, we're learning. It hasn't been, you know, it's, there's no book telling us how, what the stages are, you know, we're all doing it. And it's that expression of um, learning and allowing of this undoing. And sometimes like we move from that service to self place and we're moving into service to others. And that can be confusing in terms of being of service and having that why, because sometimes we default back to, you know, cause we're always bridging different vibrations so um, how, how did you feel when you were moving in from service to self to service to others and moving and kind of like moving that in with manifestation? How did you handle that? Yeah, it's interesting because for me, there was a, for many years, a block for me was the idea of accepting payment for what I did, because, you know, to be of service is to be selfless and to the, and mm. I am now very comfortable getting compensated for my services, you know, because when I, I do a card of the day on Instagram in the reels every single day, that's me being of service. Anyone who follows me gets a little tarot scope every day, you mm. know, and then if you want a reading and go deeper, then you can do that. So, so I look at it as different sort of degrees of, of offering. Um, and a real turning point for me, Roxy, with my tarot was uh, when I realized what took it really to the next level was when I realized it, it, these readings had nothing to do with me, you know, and, and 
when I focus on, do you think I'm doing okay? Do you, does that resonate with you? How, how does that feel? You know, because I'm looking for that validation. I'm looking mm. for that feedback because I also want it, you know, to get better and to improve and know I'm doing an okay job, but that is putting the spotlight on me. Mm. Right. And then when I made that shift of putting the spotlight on the other person, um, and then my readings went next level because then I could just say whatever came through and I wasn't filtering myself and I wasn't worried about how I would be perceived. I was just, I would say, I say the weirdest stuff in readings <laughs> because I get little visuals and, and I get my goosies and stuff. And I'm constantly showing people my armpits, like, look how sweaty I am. Oh my God, the tarot sweats. <laughs> and I don't, I'm just unfiltered about it because it's doing a disservice to everyone. If I am worried about how I'm perceived. Yeah. Does that make does that answer your makes question? Makes sense. Cause I feel like, yeah, I've been through that. We've been through that phase of like, does that resonate to you? Cause you're like cross-checking to see if like that lands. Yeah. Because some of the messages that we do get through are so out there profound. Like you're getting metaphors, symbols, and you're kind of like, why am I seeing bluebirds? Like, do you have do you have a thing with like birds or, you know, like the, the funniest synchronicities, the divine um, and our higher selves brings through for us. But I love that. I love that you're now moving into that. And for anyone that's listening, it's like that will, you know, elevate the frequency of the messages coming down and in when you do turn the spotlight off that, you know, double checking yourself into the other person and just trusting. Mm -hmm. As long as I make sure I have nothing in my teeth, you know, and that my ma mascara isn't like running down to my chin. That's all it, that is about me. Then after that, it's like, we're on you. Yeah. 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 Love it. Now, Roxy, you, you love a good full moon ritual. She often puts out her crystals or puts out a bowl of love water. It. Um, it does, you know, different little things personally, like for yourself, are there other, well, let's talk about full moon rituals because I think a lot of people would mm. be interested in that. Is the op a full moon opportunity for uh, a restart, rebirth? Is it a cleansing? Oh. How do you word it? Here she goes. Let me tell you. <laughs> so full moons are when the moon reaches peak energy, right? It reaches the apex of its power and then it releases. So during a full moon ritual, whatever it is you're doing, we, you could do a full moon ritual. You could burn your stuff on a, a random Wednesday morning, but by doing it under a full moon, it's like we're harnessing those lunar vibes to give the whole thing a little extra juice, mm. harnessing those releasing energies. And the most profound thing that I do with a full moon, which is like the book and everything, the burn your stuff is writing on pieces of paper. I now choose to release whatever it is, shame to about that thing, anger towards that person, what, you know, blocks conscious or unconscious that are keeping me from stepping into my potential, whatever you want to come up with. And you read it aloud under that full moon by yourself with others, with me on Instagram, whatever you say, I now choose to release that, that, that you light it on fire. And as it starts to burn, you say, and so it is. And I now choose to release la 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 la. And so it is. And watching these words burn is so empowering and cathartic because in that moment, you're becoming the author of your next chapter rather than a passive reader. You know, you're becoming, you're, you're setting yourself as the protagonist of your story, not someone else's sidekick. Right. And, and what's really wild is people send me stuff to burn on their behalf every month. And I hand write it out and I do channeling and rewrite it. And I combine them because every, we'd be there, you know, for days if, if I read every single one. Um, and so many of them are, are similar about scarcity, about self-love, about, mm. you know, I now choose to release George. Like <laughs> there's always like a, I now choose to release my mother-in-law. It's like, okay guys. Um, but what's wild is someone from Denmark will send me something to burn and I'm reading it on the Instagram live thinking, oh, it's like I wrote it. And you're watching in Australia thinking, oh my gosh, this resonates so, mm -hmm. so much. It's as much our release as it is Finland's release because we're in this collective space. Like we're doing ritual. We are in ceremony in that moment. And there's real power to that. I'm covered in goosebumps again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if someone does have like a mother-in-law or a, a Fred or whatever that they need to release, I suggest writing a letter, write a whole letter. I now choose to release, or, or you just say, you know, dear Fred, you, blah, 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 blah. And you just, you know, just barf your brain, your heart, your soul, your spirit onto that page. And you read that letter aloud. 
Mm. And then once you're done, you, you say, I now choose to release everything in this letter. I release the grip you have on my heart, the hold I have on yours. I release you to a life of love and joy and prosperity and myself the same. I release our bond in this type lifetime, past lifetimes, future lifetimes, and whatever else comes up. Then you light that stuff on fire. And as it starts to burn, you say, and so it is. Mm -hmm. And that's putting ritual to it. You know, it makes it matter. It gives it significance. Rituals are significant because of the significance you bestow upon them, whether it's blowing up birthday candles or burning your stuff under a full moon. And, you know, you can put water out and water your plants or use it in cooking or drink it, but I would cover it because I don't want like raccoon pee or something in, my, <laughs> in the moon water, put your crystals out to charge them. Um, you can, you can take a bath under the full moon and put certain essential oils or or crystals in the bath with you. I mean, anything that you want to do that makes you feel good and isn't getting in anyone else's way, great. Go mm. nuts. Mm. We we haven't done a full moon ritual for a while, while, and we've got a beautiful property here with the big fire pit. So we'll have to burn that oh stuff up next full moon. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I kept getting for you, for you, Laurie, you, you keep tapping into some sort of global energy when you get tingles, there's like a message or something to come through. Um, if you're open to seeing what that is, I'm just sensing that there's something big to come through for this, for this conversation today. I don't know if you're getting that. Well, no, tell me everything. I mean, <laughs> I get my gooses and my sweats, but it's not like I get well, I do get downloads, but not like, like, oh, I have a message for you like that in the moment. So go. Is it something like you're pulling a card for the collective for the viewers to see perhaps? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I was going to pull a card for each of you, but shall we pull one for the collective as well? Yeah. I kept getting collective energy for some reason, because you oh. kept mentioning it, but Pete wants a card oh, for him. <laughs> He's in a bit oh, of a no, hug this we morning. Can do it all. <laughs> we can do, we can do all of the above. It can be an and both, not an either or. Shall, okay, do you want good. to get into cards now? Pulling some cards now? Yeah, yeah well, if, you're, if, yeah? if okay. you want to, yeah. Sure. You're going to hear me knock the cards. I, I knock them. It's like an energetic palette cleanser in between every reading, even if it's oh. just a one card pull. Okay. So just like how you reset. I love this. This we'll is reset, great. Yeah. So we're getting a bit of a sample for any listeners that want to tune in and uh, engage with you. Yeah, for sure. For People sure. They're getting follow. a bit of a sample. So fun. Okay. So let's do for the collective and then I'll do for each of you. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So I'll just say, what does the collective need to know right now? Can you imagine if it was the, um, <laughs> the same as today's card of the day? Oh my gosh. You know what? Okay. I pulled three cards because why not? Um, and <laughs> the reason I pulled, <laughs> the reason I pulled three cards is because, and you'll see when you, when I show you these cards is because the first card, they're all amazing cards, spoiler alert. And when the cards are amazing, Tarot loves giving homework. Tarot loves to be like, oh, do you like that? Here's the work. Or do you like that? Don't screw it up. So I pulled another card to be like, okay, how can we facilitate this happening? And I just got another amazing card. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to pull one more because how can we make these amazing things happen? And then the other card, is, it's like Tarot saying, Lori, just stop it and just give the message. <laughs> like we're just, yeah, yeah. This is the message being told in many ways. The first card is the six of wands and it's this guy on a horse and he's so great. They're throwing him a parade. You know, it's getting validation, kudos, accolades, rewards, awards for who you are and what you're doing. And it can be career related often, but it can also be someone who's a stay at home parent or in school retired. It still tracks because it's putting yourself out there to be really seen and then being celebrated for that, mm. whether it shows up as a big bag of money or a, way to go kid or oh my god you know how does Pete do it it's getting the external praise and recognition for who you are and what you're bringing to the table mm. so I pulled another card to be like well how can we make this happen <laughs> or how can we avoid screw-ups and the second card I got was the three of cups and they're all just raising a glass going oh my god we're amazing cheers Ooh, it's these three women just like hoisting a glass and this is celebrating it's having reasons to celebrate your awesomeness whether that's a, a special occasion or um a, 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 an achievement, an accomplishment, or just like, oh my God, we made it, you know, but it's having beautiful celebratory energy. So do you see how we're getting this similar vibe? Yeah. Each of these 78 cards has a different story to tell. Mm. And some of the cards share a thread or a through line. So when I sound repetitive or thematic or like a broken record, especially two out of 78 cards, it's like the cards are going, did you hear it? 
Do you get it? <laughs> Did you get the time, message? You know. Yeah. So, and then I'm like, okay, but how can we make it happen? Like, I always want to know. And the cards are like, not on my watch, lady. Uh, because then we got the the six of swords, and it's where this woman's being taken in a kind of like a gondola from rough water to smooth water, and it's mm -hmm. saying where things have been rocky and rough and tumultuous, it's going to be more smooth sailing. All the swords around, that's fear, worry, doubt, anxiety, three in the morning, lying in bed, just going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That, that you know, that associated with the rough water, that's going to ease off as well. Mm. So do you see how the cards are like, lady, I got all day. I can keep telling you this in different ways. You know, this beautiful being valued and recognized for, for your efforts, having occasion to celebrate mm. and going from the rough water to the smooth water, whether that rough water to smooth water leads to this good stuff or the good stuff helps facilitate the smooth water, who cares? You know, it's don't worry about the order of it. It's just, it's a beautiful um it's like we all need that message of reassurance. Yeah. And we do it's at this of, time, like, you know, this time, this, yeah. this great change this year uh, globally. So for those yes. looking and worried about what's going to happen, look what's happening. There's smooth waters yeah. ahead <laughs> and there's celebration like energy. The, yeah. No? It feels like the cards are like, you don't have to do it. Like it's happening. You don't, yes. you're doing it. That's what, that's what it feels like. Yeah. I just got mm. pieces. That's what it feels like it is. That's why the cards are like, just stop it and just show the cards <laughs> and like i feel like for a lot of light workers you know after over the last five years they've really been digging deep and and doing that in a healing and you know it's kind of like you get over one mountain and there's another two mountains and you know like this you know this big purge and i feel like there is come we're coming to like a bit of a finale of the chapter you know and i feel like your card reading is really um reflecting that mm -hmm. I agree. Beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. After the COVID of it all and everything, you know, like we're just going from like fire to fire to fire to fire. And and this is a, just a nice message to be like. Everything's looked after. It's, it's fine. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the wink from yeah. the universe. <laughs> yeah. And also kind of like a, like a side eye, like, why do you keep asking me? Like, is the question not answered? <laughs> it was, that was a funny little example of that. How the cards, I always say the cards have a, you know, it's like a personality almost. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that is, it. I can feel the personality in it. And it's almost like, you know, when we're talking before about when we're channeling and we're like, does that resonate? It's like, we're always looking for that validation because we're nervous of getting something wrong or am I going the right direction? You know, um, a lot of people feel like that because we're just kids at the end of the day. We're like little kids in a school playground, you know, wanting mm -hmm. to be good students of the universe. So I don't think it's yeah, a bad exactly. thing asking if we're doing the wrong thing or right thing, but I think we need to move into our power now as, as old souls on the planet, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Shall we pull a card for you, Roxy? <laughs> yeah. See what happens. <laughs> got my eye on you now. Yeah, yeah. I have, uh, we'll see. see what happens. Doing, I call this, I call this card the awkward stare where I just get oh. my show in here. <laughs> <laughs> here I go, okay. everyone. <laughs> there we go. What does Roxy need to know right now? Okay. You see, you got the two <laughs> that of points. Laurie, right? what are you going to give me? Oh, dear. I always say, listen, there are no bad tarot cards, just bad tarot card readers, okay? <laughs> okay, so okay. You're never going to, there's never, some are less sexy and more work, but there's no bad cards. The two of coins, I'm just got goosey, so I'm like, ooh, I feel like this will resonate. The two of coins, he's sitting there, he's sort of like juggling these two coins and there's rough waters behind him. And this is busy, 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 busy energy. It's like when you see those people on TV spinning the plates on the sticks and they're trying to keep the plates from crashing, right? And that's a vibe, it's a hustle, you can do it. The two of coins is reminding you, I've got goosebumps, that um, some of those plates you're spinning are really delicate fine bone china that need your care and attention. Some of those other plates that you're spinning are cheap plastic crap from like the dollar store. So just let it drop, you know, don't get stretched so thin, pulled in 50 directions, trying to keep all these plates going that could be offloaded or delegated or just forget about it. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a goofy example, but for so many years, it was laundry where I would just say, you know what, it's clean in the basket, figure it out. Better yet, do it yourself, you know, plates dropped. Um, and also consider how we are sometimes frantically spinning Tupperware and we are treating it like it is grandma's good china because we feel a compulsion, um, a, a, a need to validate our worth, our contribution, our value. And this card is coming along to say, you don't need to do that. Mm. That's not necessary. 
Mm. You know, so just hear my voice in your head going, is this the good stuff or is this the cheap stuff? <laughs> like, which okay. That's really yeah. good. That resonates. Yeah. Especially like right? mom life and juggling the business and what we're doing and mm-hmm. me and everything, him juggling yeah. this guy. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And it's just, and it's busy, busy. You're, you know? you're just- like the ch- the fine china that you, you can say. <laughs> I, 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 I had that thought. What am I, the plate from the dollar shop? Which one am I? It's like, wait, am I Ikea? Which one am I? <laughs> <laughs> And some stuff, you know, it'll turn into the, it might turn into the good stuff down the road, but for now it's, it's the cheap plastic crap. So just let it, let it go. It's fine. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which speaks to that whole where focus goes, energy flows, you know, and you want your focus to be, you don't, and you don't want to be so depleted that you're kind of doing nothing everywhere rather than doing good, solid work in the directions that really require it rather than the ones that you feel obligated to do, mm. even though there's, there's no real um stake there mm-hmm. got it that's yeah. beautiful it's made me recenter re reset thank yeah. you very much good little tip all right excellent okay you ready pete i'm ready to go Laurie. let's do it we got the knock out of the way now the awkward stare <laughs> okay awkward stare over you did amazing i love oh, it it's so good because pete needs me right now all right so you've got a card that on, when I show it, this is going to be a beautiful example of there are no bad cards, just bad tarot card readers. Cause they, you're going to see this card. I'm not showing it to him yet. And you're just going to go, Oh God, but it's not a bad card. It's actually offering you a really valuable reframe. Okay. Uh, this is going to be. Oh, three of swords. oh Jesus. A big juicy red heart with three swords sticking out of it. Um, and this card is emotional fragility. It is tender heartedness. It is grief. It is achy, breaky heart. It was COVID for everyone, you know, where things that normally would roll off your back, no big deal. Instead, stick, 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 stick. And you go, I can't do it anymore. And you need a bath and a drink and a cry. And you come out going, I'm fine. I'm okay. But like, you're not okay. You know, and the three of swords is reminding you that this is not big deal stuff you can't handle. And this is not forever. It just feels like it when you're in it. You know, it is like, um, a rain cloud just splooshing down on you. And it feels like a tsunami when you're under it. And this card is reminding you that that rain cloud will eventually dissipate on its own. Or more often than not, we look up and go, oh my God, it's a rain cloud. And you just kind of leave it behind. So just watch that as you're navigating these emotionally like fragile moments to to just really be mindful that you're not mistaking rain clouds for tsunamis. Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm got it yeah yeah do you see how it's like just a reframe like it's not saying that there's not this happening or that there's not this like tender-heartedness but it's more just watching that you're not making it um more unmanageable than it really is you know right like it's not like oh no it's great it's great it's just more like just watch that you're not seeing that that rain cloud and, and reacting to it as if it's a tsunami and just understand that you can handle this. It's not It's not big deal stuff you can't handle. It's just, you know, it is what it is. And it's not forever. It just can feel like it when you're in it. Gotcha. Okay, Makes thank sense. you. Yes. You're welcome. Yo, and then you got all those other three cards too with all the goodness coming. Yeah. But you don't want a card like that to be like a kink in the garden hose, like wah, 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 getting in the way of that collective message that was all the juiciness. Yeah. Right. I love it. Yeah, they always work together. And same with you, Roxy, too. If you're spinning Tupperware, treating it like it's all grandma's good china, it can it can impede or slow down um, getting to all the good stuff that we pulled in those collective messages. I love how you read. I'm just like tuning into how you can relate to, I know everyone will get something out of our cards today even though the messages were intended for us, but I feel like everyone could get a perspective because you bring through this energy that everyone can kind of have. There's something, there's something, a reflection of a lesson or a learning, you know, for so many people, like I'm sure there's so many women like myself juggling everything, thinking everything's fine China when, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. 
girlfriend focus on what's really important and like pete like don't sweat those little like things as big storms they're just see them as rain clouds and let them move through you you know like beautiful i love that you connect to that you're very special like that oh thank you well i think it's important to know too that this is what happens with my card of the day half the time i'll be posting it thinking why am i even putting this up like this is obviously my message why am i putting it out there forever and i'll get dms and comments all day long oh my god that's my card how did you know oh i needed this so badly and it's because tarot is there's nothing magic these aren't magic you know these these cards they're pieces of paper with pictures but they can be very magical because it's just like with any ritual you do it's the intention that you put into them um intention is everything and these images and the stories of each card they 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 are based in archetypes and archetypes are the language of the universe you know they are they are the means by which we um have been telling stories and living stories since the dawn of time you know it's it's a way to tap into the collective unconscious so that's why when i tell you about the two of coins and someone's listening going well that's my message it is your message absolutely it's your if it's resonating with you it's your message and it's what's cool too is people will comment on my card of the day from like two weeks ago but they've just found it and they'll say oh my god this is exactly what i need it's like yes and it's not you didn't need it two weeks ago because you needed it today yeah totally i love it that's where sort of the magic of tarot is it's how it it's how it's connected to that collective unconscious so it's part of that universal database that we all are plugged into yeah so tell us how did you raise your vibration in order to receive these divine knowings and messages to do what you do i definitely started i mean it it was a shift from why not me to why not me good why not me right that was a and and that I would see people online or in, you know what a lot of it was? I would watch like Oprah on Super Soul Sunday, or I would watch these other influential speakers and I would be, they'd be talking about stuff and I'd say, oh, well, that's the tower. Oh, that's the high priestess. Oh, that's the chariot. And I think like all of these, you know, and they're beautiful speakers bringing forth beautiful um, ideas and ways of seeing the world and seeing our place in the world. And I would always think to myself, but that's a, that's that tarot card. And so it kind of became, it, it just, I was kind of like, I couldn't stay in my seat. Like I had to jump out of my seat and be like, this is in the cards guys. Like we could do it this way too. Um, yeah, that was kind of it. I'd see these things seeing like these, and then it's again, those universal messages. So that's what, when I started, it was an excitement, you know, and also a bit of like, well, I'm kind of missing out. It was like being outside a party and the door's wide open. I'm like, why aren't I going to the party? Like, um, mm. I like a party. Mm. So I just started doing my card of the day, but I would only do it in stories. So it would disappear in a day because oh. I was worried about how I would like, I, you know, I was doing it at the car run. I, I'd be at the school drop off and my, you know, phone wedged in the steering wheel looking like garbage. So I was like, I don't want this sitting around all day. And now, you know, years later, I don't care. Half the time I have, don't have makeup. I'm in the woods and I'm just like, Hey guys, let's pull a card. Um, <laughs> So th- I think it was it was just that excitement slash like sort of fear of missing out mm. because I th- these cards have so much to say and no one was really making that connection between the cards and these all of these self help people or enlightened thinkers mm. and it's all coming from the same source it's just different ways of being delivered and I was like people need to know about this. Yeah. Then if you get a deck a deck of cards, it's just like with rituals. Half the rituals in this book you can do for free and on your own. You don't need to have a cauldron and a coven, but like, you know, if you're meeting your friends for drinks after work, you kind of do have a coven. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see like we can feel your energy of high frequency, the excitement. And that's I feel like your true authentic soul. Like that's glistening yeah. in the high frequency and bringing that down and in. So thank you for being so real and of service and excited yeah. about it. <laughs> it's yeah, a it's, it's my pleasure. A breath of fresh air, really. I think a lot of people are going to want to follow you, you know. I think a lot of people watching this are going to want to follow the card of the day and, of course, get into the book on rituals and the you got your next book, the tarot book, to follow, teaching them, 
you know, a little bit more about this that we've just touched on briefly. So how do people get in contact with you? Let's talk about that aspect of things. Sure. Well, I'm I'm most active on Instagram. Uh-huh. And yep. on Instagram, I'm tarot.lori. So T-A-R-O-T dot L-O-R-I. And then lauridian.com, which is L-O-R-I-D-Y-A-N is my website. And if you just Google Tarot Lori, I usually come up. Amazing. How good is that? <laughs> high up in the old Googling. Yes. Ah, oh, there you go. Well, communications background. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> a little manifesting there and a little communications background. <laughs> <laughs> and any last word, words of wisdom for our viewers, Laurie? You've got a lot of things to share. We've really enjoyed this chat today. Um, any words, pearls of wisdom that you, you live by for anyone listening? I think just my tagline is woo woo without the cuckoo. You know, <laughs> I I take what I do very seriously. I've been doing it for 35 years now. And so I take it seriously, but I'm not ridiculous about it, you know, and I'm not precious about it. And whether it's ritual or tarot or horoscopes or, you know, astrology or any other kind of like metaphysical um, tool, don't be scared of it. Don't be intimidated by it. You know, it's these things are accessible to everyone and everyone starts at day one. So if something sort of piques your interest, then, then follow that, those little breadcrumbs to see where they lead you, whatever your way in is. Mm. Take it. Mm. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on our Elevated Conversations podcast today. It's been so nice to meet you. We're going to enjoy following you on Instagram and I'm sure a lot of our listeners will reach out to you for a reading because you do have high frequency and we've really seen that today. So thank you so much. Thank you. I need a shower now. You got me all sweaty. This was so (laughs) much fun. Like the energy is just churning. This was a delight. Thank you so much. (laughs) 